Hi everyone, it's Mr. Wyman here, and I'm excited to read with you the book, How to Write a Poem. So poetry is like a love-hate relationship with me, and there's a couple of antonyms, right? Love and hate. Um, I love the idea of poetry. I love beauty. I like playing with words. Um, the only hate part is that I wish I had more time for it. Um, I don't read it enough because I'm more into like nonfiction and stories and novels and writing stories. Um, I wish I had more time to, to do it and make it. But I'm looking forward to this book because I'm hoping that this book will kind of insp inspire me. And I hope that it will help you um, find a style of poetry that you enjoy. Um, I've done a little bit of poetry and it's always a blast. So here we go. How to write a poem. What is a poem? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Do you remember hearing these lines when you were little? I, I do personally. The words paint a picture in your mind. Each line has a rhythm or beat. This is a poem. Poets are people who write poems. They use words to help you see things in a fresh new way. You can be a poet too. Just look around. What will you write a poem about? What makes a great poem? Poems are the songs you sing. They're in the books you read. You may have used them when choosing sides for a game. But what makes a great poem? Wonderful words. That's alliteration. Words make poems special. Good poets take the time to choose the perfect words. Poets might choose describing words that help their readers see what they're, write, what they're writing about. Soft white mist drifts by the craggy mountains. Look at that word craggy. Um, it's fun to say. Like in poetry, I don't know if the book will get into this, is meant to be read out loud. And it's all about feelings. I mean, soft white mist and and that contrasts with the word craggy, right? The mist is like a blanket over these craggy mountains. Here's a writer's tip. Poets know what they need to write a good poem. Soon you will too. You can start with these four things. Wonderful words, perfect pictures, and not just photos or images, painting pictures in people's minds using words cool comparisons and special sounds like i mentioned the sound of craggy S they might choose action words that help you see how things move here's a poem called storm by gare thompson not familiar with that poem leaves whip by windows shake and rattle Birds huddle on branches. We stay warm inside. So these were a couple of uh, some action words that really bring the, the message of the poem to life. Your turn, your poem. Some people collect shells or stones. Poets collect words. Start a poet's notebook. Collect wonderful words that you see, hear, or read. You can use your words when you write your poems. Um, Let's start that. In your writing journal, begin um, collecting words, just cool words, like that word craggy. You might want to write that down. Um, and maybe we can use them in some future poetry. You might not end up using them, but having cool words that really um, bring your, poet, your poem to life are exciting and fun to use. Perfect pictures. Poets use words to create images. Images are like pictures in a poem. Though poets paint pictures in the reader's mind. Think of the wind. You can't draw a picture of it. Still, this poet helps you see what happens when the wind blows. Who has seen the wind? Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves hang trembling, the wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. 
But when the leaves bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. Can you picture the leaves? The words make them sound. The words make them sound like people, like trembling. Oh, you know. Cool comparisons. Another way poets paint pictures is by comparing things. A simile compares two different things using like or as. Poets try to use similes no one has thought of before. Remember Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? The third and fourth lines are a simile. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. A metaphor compares two different things without using like or as. What comparisons are made in these two poems? Me, poem. I am wind, rushing wild and free. I am water, running fresh and cool. I am sunshine, burning bright. I am the moon changing over time. Another Garrett Thompson. I wonder if that's the author of this book. Your turn, your poem. Try making your own perfect pictures. Think of a person, place, or thing that you love. How could you help others see it the way you do? Would a simile help? A metaphor? Write your ideas in your poet's notebook. Like if you were writing about nature, maybe you're writing about forests and you could talk about you could talk about skyscrapers and buildings, comparing a forest to a city. Or maybe you're writing about the city and you could act like the city is a forest, a forest of buildings. See the metaphor there? If you're writing about the classroom, you could talk about it being like something else, you know? Um, you're so familiar with the classroom and the, and the people here, it's like home or it's like a family, see? When I use pirate, our pirate theme, it's full of metaphors and similes because um, I try, I treat our classroom as if, or our class, as if it's a crew, a team. Special sounds. Poets do more than create pictures when they write a poem. They also create sounds. Sounds are what make a poem fun to listen to. Rhyme. Many poems use words that rhyme. Rhyming words sound alike. Often rhyming words are at the end of the line as in this poem. And the rhyming sounds are the last part of the word too. So it makes sense that they were at the end of the line. Yesterday upon the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish I wish he'd go away. Um, from Antagonish by William Hughes Mearns. Rhythm. Some poems also have a rhythm or beat. Say the word happy. The first part of the word has a stronger beat than the second one. Happy. Reread the poem about the man on the stair. Can you hear the beat? I, I thought I felt it as I was reading it. Yesterday upon the stair I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wish, I wish he'd go away. Same sounds. So sometimes poets use many words that begin with the same letter. This is called alliteration. Here's a poem about two poor bugs caught in a flu. Which words begin with the same sound? A fly and a flea in a flu. A fly and a flea and a flu were imprisoned, so, wh so what could they do? Said the fly, let us flee, let us fly, said the flea, and they flew through a flaw in the flu. <laughs> so you've got a few homophones here, don't you? A flu would be a chimney, and it lets the exhaust out from fireplaces and also heating um, furnaces. So, and then this flu is to fly, right, in the past tense. And then you have fly, like flying through the air, and then the insect fly, this guy. Splish, splash. Some words sound like what they are describing. The snake hissed. You can hear the sound when you say the word. Thaw. 
The snow is soft and how it squashes. Galumph, galumph, go my galoshes. This kind of wordplay is called onomatopoeia. Animal band, horses neigh, cows moo, donkeys bray, ducks quack too. The barnyard band begins. As if um, the sounds that all these animals are making are part of an orchestra or a musical ensemble. Your turn, your poem. Phew, you've been busy. You've made pictures with words. You've learned how poets make special sounds. Now you're ready to write some poems of your own. Save the poems you write in your poet's notebook. Word games, acrostic poems. Do you like word games? Then you may like writing an acrostic poem. I'm actually going to stop here because I want to prepare you for writing poetry and then we'll try out a few different kinds of poetry, but mostly I want you to write like I want you to write messages and stories in an artistic way. So I want us to just kind of have fun before we really like narrow in on styles. Um, acrostic is a very specific style and I know the rest of this book is going to get into very strict specific forms of poetry. Before we get into that, I want us to just have fun with the idea of poetry.